We'll have numbers on the bite that income inequality is taking out of people's paychecks. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by GEP, building supply chains with strategies, services, and cloud-native software, including GEP Smart and GEP Next, AI-based digital procurement and supply chain platforms. And by Fidelity Investments, introducing Fidelity Income Planning, helping to build a plan for income that lasts. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC, member NYSC, SIPC. I'm David Brancaccio. First, negotiations on a $900 billion coronavirus relief bill appear stalled this morning. Lawmakers are searching for a compromise on a major sticking point. Businesses that want to be protected from getting sued over COVID. Marketplace's Nancy Marshall Genzer joins us. Nancy, the liability issue. Yeah, David, Republicans want legal protections for companies, schools, and nonprofits that would shield them from lawsuits if someone like a student, customer, or employee got COVID. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell wants very broad protections. Democrats say that would let bad actors who actually were negligent off the hook, and the negotiators are trying to come up with a compromise. What are ideas? Well, there was a proposal for a temporary freeze on lawsuits, but Republicans didn't like that because they said lawyers would just wait until it was over to sue. Senator Mitt Romney, Republican of Utah, has suggested establishing a liability shield just for illnesses that occurred this year. But there's another sticking point. Republicans don't like Democrats push to give state and local governments more aid. And the negotiators are pairing these two issues together so each side gets some of what it wants. And if this falls through, no more coronavirus relief in 2020? Federal unemployment benefits would end the day after Christmas. A freeze on evictions would also stop at the end of this year. Uh, The new COVID relief bill would include a $300 a week federal unemployment supplement, and it, it would extend the eviction freeze. All right, Nancy, thank you. Markets, Dow and S&P futures are down half a percent each. Self-driving cars must be just around the corner. Remember when Uber was investing heavily in a future where the robot pod cars would come pick you up? Well, there's news Uber is selling off its autonomous driving business to Aurora Innovation, which is allied with Amazon. Uber will stay involved with a $400 million investment. Uber's stock is down 3.4% in pre-market trading. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Progressive Insurance, protecting small businesses with specialized coverages for commercial vehicles. More at ProgressiveCommercial.com. And by Avalara, simplifying sales tax compliance with cloud-based solutions. Avalara automatically integrates with more than 700 of the most widely used ERP and e-commerce solutions. Avalara, tax compliance done right. And by C3.ai. C3.ai software enables organizations to use artificial intelligence at enterprise scale, solving previously unsolvable business problems. Learn more at C3.ai. On the Marketplace Morning Report here, we're asking people with diverse perspectives what should change in a post-pandemic economy. Reimagining the economy is the ongoing series. Today, numbers showing the widening gap between rich and poor is likely taking money right out of your pocket. It's a new analysis from the Rand Corporation, a mathematician and an economist, looked at U.S. incomes over decades. To use that golden oldie from economics, once upon a time when the economy grew, it tended to lift most boats, boats being incomes, livelihoods. Here's one of the Rand authors, senior mathematician Carter Price. So if the economy grew 5%, Uh, someone at the bottom of the income distribution, their income, you would expect to grow somewhere around 5%. And someone at the top of the income distribution, you would expect their income to grow about 5%. Used to be when the economic tide came in, the boats would rise in unison. Wealthy, the not so wealthy, as well as people of modest means. Notice I used the past tense there. After 1975, into the 80s, 90s, and to today, That has not been the case. And the the gains of economic growth have been primarily going to the top. And for some segments of the population, there have been no gains whatsoever. From the mid-1970s, around the time that Captain and Tennille's Love Will Keep Us Together was the number one song in America, the RAND data show that the great widening really took off. The affluent got wicked rich, as we say in New England. And for those not rich, their incomes kind of just sat there. Women, people of color, inequality has been rising for 45 years. But particularly among white men, 
because at the bottom of the income distribution, at the median and below, their incomes uh, controlling for inflation were essentially flat for the last 45 years. Lots of reasons. Deregulation increasing the power of firms, the decline of unionization, globalization. But while this detailed data is new, the idea of the gap between rich and poor widening is not new. And for some, the temptation is to dismiss attention to this as the green monster known as envy. They got rich, how come I didn't? But the RAND data is striking in another way. The researchers figured out how much more we'd be getting paid now if the great widening of incomes after the 1970s had never happened. It's a ton of money. It, it essentially cost the bottom 90 percent of the of workers about two and a half trillion dollars. If the word trillion hurts your head, Rand also looked at what happened to the typical full-time earner in America. Ready for this? Instead of median earners getting $50,000 a year, as they do now, they'd make an estimated $92,000 a year, maybe even more, depending on how inflation is calculated. If the gap between rich and poor had not widened over the last 45 years as it did, a $50,000 a year worker would be earning $42,000 a year more. In fact, the RAND data indicate most people would be doing better if the old pre-1970s inequality trends had continued, which they didn't. One conclusion Dr. Price draws is that just making the economy grow is not enough. If someone is promoting an economic policy that this will be good for the economy, what does that mean to me if I'm not going to see any benefit from that? I'm not going to see a higher income. Carter Price and his economist colleague Catherine Edwards at RAND have noted there's more work to do on this. For instance, the study did not look at what government social safety net programs like Social Security did to ease inequality. As for other policy options, I also talked today to one of the people who funded this RAND research, a quadrillionaire hedge fund guy turned progressive campaigner named Nick Hanauer. Stream that at marketplace.org if you miss it on the air. I'm David Brancaccio. This is the Marketplace Morning Report. APM, American Public Media.